Is there not an entire section on this subject? Yes, my that's so it's unfair. I may have I may have saved my mind about beef, for example. Is is your is your book for sale about it? Yes. Have you ever asked God for forgiveness? I'm not sure. I just go and try and do a better job. Let me tell you. 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 Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. Yo, Trey. What up? I got something to say. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Let Me Tell You, episode 132. I'm your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. the Evangelical Norm. So, let me tell you, as a podcast I do dealing with politics, culture, sports, anything that isn't really directly related to theology or anything like that, I kind of drop it in here um, under just the auspices of Let Me Tell You, just a a cultural, current events kind of podcast, which I don't do uh, very often. Um, I'm trying to get back to like an every other week schedule on this uh, to coincide with the the fifth seal every other week kind of thing. So, um, but really whenever something comes up that I really feel like I want to talk about it and it's not really theology, it's not a master's dog episode, it's not, you know, an unsolicited or something like that, then this is where it comes. So, um, for those of you, again, who have liked and shared and continue to comment on, on the videos, I appreciate it. You guys are the reason why the algorithm makes these videos more uh, accessible in search engines and so on because you interact with them. And so the algorithm lets it interact with more and more people, drawing more people in, continuing to get uh, subscribers almost daily, if not you know a few every week. Um, it doesn't seem like much. I mean, we're sitting at about 320 right now. Uh, but that continues to grow, and that's because of you guys. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who question or uh, comments, uh, likes, and shares. Um, please, if you have comments, leave them in the in the the comment section. I'm ready for all the smoke. I take questions, comments, snide remarks. I'm open for all of that stuff. I would say if you don't like the video until the end, wait, watch the whole video, and then if you like it, like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. Again, I'm a big boy. I can handle the truth. I can. I can. I, I would like your honesty, critiques, anything like that. I'm down for all of that. Um, share the video if you think it might be helpful to other people, and. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, get all the stuff that I uh, release here on the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. You can also get all of the podcasts um, in audio form, wherever it is you get your audio podcasts. Google Play, Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, any of those places, I believe we're on Pandora. Um, you can pick up the audio podcast. If you don't have time to sit down and watch a video, you can Put it in as an MP3, put it in your earbuds and take it with you um, while you're jogging or whatever. Um, So today's episode is going to be a little different, something that I haven't really um, done. I don't know, maybe I've done a couple videos kind of relating and but it's really going to be a hard video. I'm just I'm kind of just bantering at this point because um, it. It's a hard, hard uh, topic, but it's not so hard either. And so it's just weird. Emotions are going to run high. I'm probably going to cry. Just be prepared for that. So um, the beginning of March. I I don't know what it is about March. March seems to be like this um, cyclic month where it just seems to be hard. Um, I don't know what death seems to affect me in March for years from way back when in high school, um, there was a March and I believe it was 1990 when it just seemed like all kinds of people I knew were dying and I was in high school. Um, now I have a better theology to deal with death than I did back then. Um, which makes it a little easier, but not so easy. So um, we'll get to it. The first week of March was just bad. Um, From day one, the the 28th until uh, February and through the the 4th of March, 
um, through that morning was just like, just seemed like one thing after another, after another was going on. So, um, first off, a, a, a young lady that I've known for, for years, um, since she was teeny tiny, uh, maybe not quite that. I don't think Brooklyn was ever that small. Um, but, uh, Brooklyn, uh, passed away, uh, after, uh, dealing with just some really bad, uh, disease issues and stuff like that, years of treatment that weren't working. And so finally she and her family, you know, sat down and said, you know, it's time to just go. Right. And so over the last few months, she blogged about, she was an active blogger. She always had some really good things to say. Brilliant young lady. Um, I'm so blessed to have known her for as long as I did. Um, her family, her friends, just everybody surrounding her. Um, just amazing. You know, I knew her through uh, a theater group, initially met her through the theater group, uh, Musical Community Productions in Pueblo, Colorado. Everybody used to call it Merry Christmas Pueblo because we did a Christmas play every year um, and ended with Merry Christmas Pueblo. And so everybody thought MCP meant Merry Christmas Pueblo. It was Musical Community Productions. Um, and that's how I initially met her. When the first year I, I uh, played in the, the uh, Scrooge, we did the, the play Scrooge. And that was when I met her and her family. And then, you know, through other friends of mine, continued to be connected throughout the years. And so always an inspiring young lady. But she lost her battle. Well, <laughs> again, she didn't lose her battle. Um, Psalm one sixteen fifteen applies so greatly to this situation. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So she didn't. She didn't lose. I mean, Paul tells us, you know. Um, to live is Christ and to die is gain. She gained everything. We lost. We lost her. Um, and many of us, I mean, we know that we haven't lost her, that she's just waiting. In a better place where she's no more tears, no more pain. All of that is gone. Praise God for that for Brooklyn because she was experiencing a lot of pain um, probably a lot of tears but so that that was how my week started and then that morning I had to fire an employee and just it was just bad and then Wednesday my my family left uh, from here to go to Colorado because another friend of ours um, young lady with Down syndrome who was diagnosed with leukemia going through treatment, was not responding to the treatment. And so, again, the decision was made based upon prayer and, you know, theological knowledge that, it, you know, this is what was best for her was to just go ahead and, and stop treatment. So, again, don't know how much longer God is going to give her here on this earth. Um, and, uh, but some... My wife and my daughter and my mother-in-law went out there to, you know, just see her for the last time before they wouldn't be able to see her again. And um, and so, again, it was just all this stuff just kind of stirring up. So Friday morning comes around as I'm getting ready to go out and do the abortion ministry. And again, for those of you who know, um, I always put this counter up on the screen. When I start talking about anything that has to do with abortion, I put this counter up on the screen just so we can see um, the reality of what abortion is. So I'm, I'm just going to leave that up there and I'm going to talk about it because this is, I want to, to, to bring the, the awareness of what is happening with abortion, but I want to bring, at this point, I want to kind of bring the, the, the level up of the podcast from what it has been. Um, I'm still going to cry, even though I'm, it's, this is, this is all praise report for God. People, have, people ask me to put this in because I've, I've told this story to tons of different people over the last week and they're like, make a podcast. Okay, here we go. Podcast is coming. Um, 
so Friday morning, I, I get off of work and literally I always deal with kind of the spiritual warfare, the enemy trying to come and, you know, give all these reasons why I shouldn't be going down to the Planned Parenthood for the abortion ministry. You're too tired. You worked all night. It was a hard night. And it was Thursday night was, was a hard night. I think, um, I, I think one of my employees called in sick that night. Um, it just, it was, it was rough. It was really, really hard. Um, so, you know, again, enemies like you, you know, you're, you're just surrounded by death, you know, go home, sleep, get away from it for a while. You don't need to go deal with this, this ministry of death as you've already are dealing with this other stuff right now. And so again, it was the, and it was so tempting to just send out that text that morning. Hey, y'all had a really hard night going home and going to bed. See you next week. But I came home. I just, you know, pushed through all of that, gathered up all my stuff, gathered my GoPro, gathered my uh, microphone, all my tracks, all the stuff that I take with me. And down to Planned Parenthood, we went. Um, I went. And so as I got there, I actually got there on time that day, which is amazing, too. And so I was there about five minutes to nine. But the pregnancy center, the pregnancy resource center, pregnancy care center, I don't know what they, they're going by um, at this point. But they um, had their, their van out the with the ultrasound machine inside the van. So they can do right there on the spot. They can do ultrasounds, provide pictures and all this stuff, which... For a couple of weeks, they've been down there and nothing, you know, nobody, you know, we still get the same, you know, people flipping us off, cursing us out, uh, yelling at us because we're, we're evil monsters who want to help women, um, not kill their baby. And we want to give them money and help them with medical needs, financial needs and so on so that they can let their baby live. I mean, we're so evil. Um, and so this day it was completely completely different I when I got there they were doing paperwork for one young lady to go into the van who had had an appointment with with Planned Parenthood to to murder her baby to have an abortion she's filling out paperwork to go in the van and have an ultrasound they're having a conversation with another young lady who didn't speak any English boyfriend spoke a, a little bit of English but they're talking to them this young lady was actually lied to by Planned Parenthood this is this is the, the the organization that you're dealing with, people. When you're when you're dealing with Planned Parenthood, this girl was lied to. They told her that she didn't wasn't pregnant, that they weren't doing an abortion for a baby, that she had an infection that they had to go in there and remove, because apparently she was did not want to kill a baby, and so they had convinced her that oh no, this is not a baby, it's an infection. So when she was talking to the women at the van, the pregnancy center van, and they were saying, look, they don't do abortions. They don't schedule an abortion for an infection. If they're doing an abortion, it is a baby. And they're telling her, and she's becoming more and more and more upset. Um, her boyfriend doesn't know what to do. And, and so it's just this, this weird situation. And finally, as I got set up and everything, they got in their car and they drove to the back of the, the building to where the, you would go into the Planned Parenthood. One of the ladies came over and said, hey, if you see them come across, try to talk to them. She's very upset. She doesn't really seem like she wants to do this abortion because now she realized she's been lied to. He's kind of wanting to do it, but not sure. <clears throat> so will you talk to him? The boyfriend speaks English. And I was like, absolutely. And so as I'm waiting and I'm standing and I'm, I preach a little bit, never see them come across the parking lot, across the driveway to go into the Planned Parenthood. So I'm continuing to watch, continuing to preach. And at times I'm 90% I'm, I'm confident that I could hear her sobbing. Like I could hear the sound of, of like, <laughs> all I can, I can, best I can, um, describe it as like an anguished cry coming from behind the building, which I'm assuming was her. I can't be a hundred percent sure, but this is my, my conjecture at, the, at this point. 
So that and then another car pulls up and they, they pull up into the 10 minute parking. <clears throat> and so I kind of went and I said, hey, you know, this is only a 10 minute parking, but I've never seen them give anyone a ticket here. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to park here. And then um, are you here for Planned Parenthood? And then one of the ladies from the band came over and she gave them uh, a gift bag and she started to talk to this couple. And I walked back over to my camera, um, preached again. And then she came and she, again, once more, this lady from the band comes and said, well, you go talk to them. They are here for an abortion, but they're not 100% sure kind of thing. So I walked over and I started to speak to them. And the girl said, I said, you know, are you here for Planned Parenthood? What's going on? And she says, well, yeah, we are. Um, we're scheduled for an abortion at 930. She says, but I, I think it's it's Tubal. Um, she says, I think it is. And I so I, I that's what I just feel like it. And I said, well. I can tell you, I can guarantee you that what you're dealing with is not an ectopic pregnancy. It's not tubal. And she's like, well, how can you do that? I said, because you're comfortable. You're, I mean, ectopic pregnancies are painful. They're an ER visit. Once you know, once it's there and it's that, that baby has grown to a size in the, the fallopian tube that it's, it's causing pain that you would know it was a, a an ectopic pregnancy. This is an ER visit. This is not something that Planned Parenthood deals with. They don't do ectopic pregnancies. No matter how much they lie to you, Planned Parenthood does not do ectopic pregnancies. They can't. It's an ER visit. It's a surgical uh, OR, you know, surgeons, all that stuff get involved in an ectopic pregnancy. So I'm like, yeah, I can guarantee you it's not ectopic. And we talked for a little bit. And I'm like, you know, I said, here's the, here's the situation. I said... You know, they were talking, they had two other kids already, didn't think they could afford a third. I'm like, look, we'll adopt your baby. And I said, I'm not even giving you some, you know, nebulous response that somebody will adopt your baby. My wife and I will adopt your baby. We will do, do this for you. And so they agreed and they got the paperwork. They start filling out the paperwork to get in the band. And as they're finishing their paperwork, the girl and the boyfriend from the back of the building pull around and say they want to get in the van and have the ultrasound. So they let them jump in. And so I'm talking to this other couple and I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. These people were here earlier and they really want to get her in. And they were like, no, it's cool. So they sat in the 10 minute parking for uh, probably 45 minutes. Again, I went back. I talked to him for a little bit, went back, preached. Uh, and then I see... The, the girl who was so distraught come out of the van. She's got the pictures of her ultrasound. Boyfriend is with her. They came down there. Not had, had not told their parents what they were doing. Anything like that. They get this ultrasound. They see their baby. They call his parents. And they show up. And... You, you, you have to be there. I wish I could have found some pictures to do it justice. But, I mean, from my, my Facebook Live and from my GoPro, I ju there was just not a close enough context of the picture to really get the, the, the feeling of irony in the, the, what had happened at this point when Abuela and Abuelo show up and, and they're there and they're looking and they're celebrating life. They're hugging and they're they're happy and they're celebrating life outside of the place where just an hour earlier this baby was scheduled to be killed based on a lie. And this celebration that is happening on the street and I'm just I'm overwhelmed by looking at it and again it just this amazing, ironic thing that they're literally celebrating the life of the baby that was just an hour away from being executed. Outside of this place of death and destruction, life is celebrated. And so in the midst of all this, the other couple gets in, they get in the van, they have their ultrasound. And I never got a chance to talk to them again as they came out and they got their, their ultrasound and they left. But they, they told the ladies in the van they were going to keep it. And so three girls, all scheduled with appointments to murder their babies, all had an opportunity to 
step inside of this van, have an ultrasound, all saw the pictures of their babies, all went away keeping their children. And so it was like, at the end of this horrible, horrible week, in the morning that I almost didn't even go, it was just like God was going here. Let me let me just show you how amazing I am. Let me just give you this little gift. And again, it wasn't for me. None of the I, I say that, and I think it's not like God did any of this because Norm was having a bad week. But God, it, this was a gift to all three of those girls. This was a gift that God was giving to all of those ladies in the band who week after week come out and sit out there and get cursed at and laughed at and mocked and and and. You know, and us that come out there week after week and we, oh, maybe I think we might have had to turn away. It was like God was going, look, I am actively moving in this ministry. I'm actively doing this stuff. See what I am doing. And again, it's like, you know, I had, as I commented, I, I said, I put a tweet out that day that God saved three babies in Salt Lake City, Utah. And it's probably gotten the most uh, retweets and likes and, and comments and views of any tweet I've ever put out um, on the evangelical norm uh, Twitter, right? And and so it was just like all, but yet so many people are like, well, and you saved these babies and there's a war going on in Ukraine and this and that. And I just like all this stuff. And it's like, okay, I know God's ways are bigger than my ways. God chooses to have mercy on whom he will have mercy. And God's wrath is going to be poured out on whom he's going to pour out his wrath, right? And it's like, why do good things happen to good, bad things happen to good people? Well, there are no good people. The Jesus was the only good people. And the worst thing possible happened to him. And the rest of us, it's just bad things that happen to bad people. And some of us happen to be saved, but yet still sometimes bad things happen to us. But it was just at this morning that I went out there and God was like, I am working see that what you're doing is not in vain what they're doing is not in vain i am i am here i am i'm i'm with you and yet still the battle goes on still the battle goes on god is amazing god is great we celebrate that week celebrate that day went back out there this friday and I, i'm i fully think that Planned Parenthood canceled or just did not schedule any abortions for Friday morning because of the fact that the van and we were out there and they didn't want to have three more no-shows. And the one girl, again, she came to me on Friday and after uh, the three people had had their uh, ultrasounds and left and she's like, that's three no-shows for Planned Parenthood. I'm like, yeah, amazing. She was like, no money for them. And I'm like, it's not about the money for them. Right. It's not that we don't do this to to take away money from them. Those babies are alive. And so, <clears throat> again, even in that, it's just like, but Planned Parenthood didn't notice the loss of funds on that day. And so this Friday morning, there was nobody there. We saw, I saw six cars drive past me from 9 a.m. until just before 11 when I left. Six cars drove into that parking lot, two of which possibly could have been going to Planned Parenthood um, and they could have been going anywhere else but likely were going to Planned Parenthood the other two were dudes um, that are not getting abortions and no matter what the, the culture wants to tell you um, and the other two that drove back there went into the eye doctor so again this Friday again it's another victory even if there's nobody to talk to no ultrasounds to be done babies weren't killed that morning i hope if anything two were but i hope that no babies were killed because planned parenthood didn't want to deal with losing patients to our side of things another friday so we praise god for that but again like i said the battle goes on and i'm going to just turn to the the graphic in the corner this is from, I want to say it's, uh, what website is this from? It's called numberofabortions.com is the actual website. But I want to say that the information is from Guttmacher. It's from the Guttmacher um, research, guttmacher.org. 
So that's where the all this information comes from. But since we started this video, or about 10 minutes in when I loaded the graphic, 1,214 abortions um, worldwide have happened since we opened up this graphic. Um, in the United States today, since I opened up this, or today period, 928 so far have happened in the in the states um, 63 million babies have been murdered since Roe v. Wade um, since 1979 million by Planned Parenthood alone this year in the three months that we've been going 76,000 um, in the U.S. 180,000 18 or 8,000 of those are after 16 weeks of gestation um, and of those uh, 1,700 are due to the, the argument that they like to present, you know, a, a very small, and uh, right, uh, that number of rape and incest uh, cases presented, it's, it's horrible, but we don't, we don't punish the child for the crimes of the father, that, that rape and incest is not a reason to murder the baby, um, again, Planned Parenthood and, and abortion targets uh, the African-American community far more than anything else. Black children that have been killed since 1973, 19 million. So a, a good third of, or just slightly under one third of the babies that have died since Roe v. Wade have been black. When they, they only represent 13% of the population, remember, but they represent well over 25% of the abortions. So, I mean, again, just just keeping that graphic um, in your head and knowing that this is this is the fight we're fighting. This is we're, we're, we're doing this for lives. We want I mean, ultimately, it's to see souls saved. I mean, that's my goal. I preach the gospel because a repentant, regenerate person is not going to kill their child. So. Someone who has repented and put their trust in Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit, the heart of stone that would consider murdering their child is going to be replaced with a heart of flesh, and that child is going to live. They're going to have compassion on that child. I firmly believe that, that that is what the gospel will do. We give all these other uh, resources and so on, finances and medical help and all the things we can to assist that mother, but ultimately we want to see souls saved and babies live and that's why we go out and that's why we fight this fight and uh you can be involved as well so um whatever it is that you can do whether it's uh donating to an organization that is engaged in this and abortion now utah's voice for the voiceless find your local group that is is engaged in this way i mean it's i don't want you <clears throat> with people who are there to help um that are there to not just, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to support a group like the Westboro Baptist Church that is just there to call people names and, and, and so on. We want to support groups that are actually out there to help, that are going to do things to help moms have their babies and let those babies live and assist in any way they can, but also preaching the gospel. Because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? was a prophet a woman to 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 have her baby but yet continue on to hell we need to be preaching the gospel with all of these things that should be hand in hand with every merciful act that we do the gospel has to be there if the gospel isn't there your merciful acts are pointless and that's harsh but it's true so thank you guys if you can again if you can support any of these groups uh, end abortion now. Utah's voice through the voiceless. Find the one that is around you. If you can go out there and stand out there with with those who are out there preaching the gospel, hand out a tract, talk to somebody, give someone a hug, do whatever it is that you can do. Um, or if you can just sit back and pray for those of us who are out there on the front lines engaging in this. Any of those things are absolutely beneficial to the cause of life, to the preaching of the gospel, to the advancement of the kingdom. Um, and God is glorified in all of it. So thank you again. Thank you guys as always. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.